Hi everyone and welcome to ABG's Investor Days. Uh, my name is Carl Bokvist and I'm the analyst responsible for covering CTT systems on uh, behalf of ABG. Uh, today we have the pleasure of uh, having t CEO Torbjörn Johansson with us uh, who will give us an introductory presentation of a company and in the uh, if there is time available, I will ask him some follow-ups at the end of the presentation. Uh, but with that, Torbjörn, thank you for uh, joining us today and uh, please. Okay, Carl, take the next picture. Uh, I'm Torbjörn Johansson. I have been with the company since, nine, since 1996. So 1st of September this year, I've been 25 years with the company and I became CEO in 97. Take the next picture. We can continue. This is uh, the result from the first quarter, 21. Take the next. Uh, the first quarter, 21, of course, it was a problem due to the COVID-19, but we did meet our sales forecast, uh, 31 million. And it should be noted that it was the first time during the pandemic where we had aftermarket sales that was in relation to the underlying demand. And that is a positive sign. Take the next picture. Uh, net sales was down compared to the first quarter of 20. The first quarter of 20 was uh, the last quarter before the pandemic. So we have lost uh, almost 60% of our sales if we compare, but uh, we still made a positive EBIT. And, uh, that is showing the strength of the company. We have a, in a very good business. Uh, of course, we are affected by the pandemic. The cash flow was a little bit weak. It was minus 7 million. We take the next picture. <clears throat> if we look at the sales mix, uh, you can see one of the reasons we managed to uh, make a positive EBIT was that the aftermarket portion of our sales was very, very large. Uh, last year, we had about 40% in the aftermarket. This year, it was 65%. Uh, what is the big change between the two years is that the OEM has gone down. It was down to 15%. That is very, very low for CTT. Take the next slide. Uh, here uh, you can see a little bit more the changes in the net sales. Uh, as I said, the OEM is the biggest part of uh, the decrease. Uh, we have lowered the OEM sales with 29 million. Retrofit and VIP was about the same as last year. And the aftermarket was also down, but not as much as the OEM sales. We take the next slide. If we look at the profit bridge, of course, the main reason that we lost a lot in profit was uh, the lower volume. Uh, we have lost EBIT compared to last year with 22 million. We also had uh, a very strong US dollar last year. Uh, so compared to that year, we had the currency impact of about 9 million. We have had run the cost saving program and uh, we have compensated with about 6 million on the cost saving side. So we had a small EBIT profit. Take the next picture. If we look at the cash flow, it was uh, low. And uh, the main reason for the cash flow uh, was that uh, one of our big customers, they delayed the payment that was due in February, March, and they paid it in April. If we would have got that 7.5 million payment, we would have had a balanced cash flow that uh, would be in, in, in line with the EBITDA as it should be. But uh, of course, uh, a late payment, we could not compensate. Take the next slide. If we look, look at the order intake, we have now made from very, very low levels of immediately after the outbreak of the COVID-19. We have increased the order intake from quarter to quarter. 
And uh, the first quarter this year was the first quarter where we increased the backlog also. But of course, we are down to very low backlogs. And that the reason for that is that uh, Airbus and Boeing has reduced the production rates and they also don't place as long purchase orders as they have done historically. But we hope that the trend will continue, that we will continue to increase our order intake and also build the backlog. Take the next slide. If we look at the last four quarters, uh, you can take the next slide. Uh, this is four quarters with the COVID-19 and uh, we have taken actions. We started already in February to uh, increase our loan facility with 70 millions. Uh, that was a way to save up all the business. Uh, we also thought then that uh, we would be hit by the suppliers. Uh, everyone talked at that time that you should be careful that you don't get problems in the supply chain. We, uh, we increased our inventory and uh, to be sure that we could deliver to Airbus and Boeing. Uh, we also decided in April when we saw that the pandemic was very serious, we, we, we saved cash, we lowered the dividend that was planned to be the double of the amount we paid out. So in that way, we saved 50 million cash. We also started a cost saving program. Uh, we adapted the production capacity to medium, medium demand. It was most affected that in May uh, regarding the blue color stuff. Uh, we reduced the blue color stuff with about 30%. Uh, we have working on the white color side with the scheme that we worked either 60 or 80% and we got either 80 or 90% salary. Uh, we have continued that uh, by the white colors, but we will go back to 100% again now from 1st of July. And by the beginning of January, we uh, reduced the staff additionally a little bit. And that was to prepare that we could back, go back to 100% working time with the same uh, personal costs. We take the next slide. If we look at those rolling four quarters, of course, we have uh, lost half of our sales. And uh, as I said in the beginning, I'm, I'm very proud of CTT. We have lost half of the sales, but we could still make a profit those four quarters during the pandemic. The EBIT margin was 8%. And I think we, we have to be happy to uh, perform in this way during these circumstances. Where we have taken a hit is the cash flow. And, uh, and that is mainly two reasons. One is that we increased the inventory during 20 to, to secure our supply, which is the most important. But we also continue to invest in our development projects. It's uh, 777X and also now we are making investments in, in the uh, private jet sector. So during the pandemic, we have managed by cost control and our good business to keep, the prof keep a positive result. But we have continued to invest in future programs. Take the next slide. If you look at uh, the sales again, it was uh, we were hardest hit by the OEM sales. And of course, that is because Airbus and Boeing has lowered the production rate. Uh, retrofit has been about the same. Uh, VIP was even a little bit better during uh, those four quarters. And in the aftermarket, we have taken also a hit of about 90 million. But if you look at the aftermarket, that is a good illustration on what uh, we in rel relatively short term can increase our sales because the only thing we need to get the aftermarket sales back is that the aircraft and especially the 787 start to fly in the same relation as it did before the COVID-19. So there you can see uh, how, how big of our loss in uh, sales that we relatively 
quickly can recover. The OEM side is more difficult because that is dependent on the production rate from Airbus and Boeing, and uh, they will not go back uh, in pre-COVID-19 levels so quickly. We take the next picture. If we look at the outlook now, take the next. Uh, the second quarter this year we, will be a change in trend. We have had three or four quarters where we have lowered our sales, but we expect that the second quarter this year will be an increase. We expect uh, sales between 35 and 40 million. It's mainly due to the, that the OEM bounced back a little bit. We had extra low sales during the first quarter uh, due to production change, by, especially by Boeing. But uh, we expect now to start to grow. We will also have some help from private jet projects. Take the next slide. Uh, of course, we are for our recovery is uh, dependent on the aviation recovery. That's clear. And the recovery in aviation is on the way. Uh, it has started really with the domestic. If you look at the left picture, there you can see the number of flight operations in different parts of the world. And uh, you can see that China is almost up to 90% of what they did fly domestically before the COVID-19. We also have an effect in North America. They are up now to... 70% of uh, the flights they did fly before COVID-19. And of course, those two countries uh, have a lot of domestic travel. It is not the same for international travel, which is the important thing for us. If you look at the right picture, uh, it's the daily number of passenger in the United States. And you can see it was going down very quickly due to the pandemic, and then it recovered during the fall. Then we have a couple of uh, drops there due to the second and third wave. But since beginning of the year, uh, US traffic has increased, and that is an effect of the vaccination. Uh, you can see that they are up to around 1.5 million passengers per day in the United States. And I think this we will see internationally also when more of the world population are vaccinated, and especially perhaps if we get more vaccinated in Europe, we will get back the traffic between US and Europe, and then it will come direction Asia also. So the recovery in the aviation industry is on the way. It is the pace is dependent on the vaccination. We take the next picture. For CTT, as I said, our recovery, our immediate recovery is dependent on the aftermarket. And the aftermarket is dependent on the installed base of humidifiers we have. And you can see on the left side there, the installed base that has been growing over the years. And even though 2020 was a very bad year for us on the OEM side, our installed base did grow. But of course, when the aircraft is standing on the ground, you can see on the right side, the aftermarket sales were going down. The uh, humidifier pads that we, uh, the airlines normally replace every year or after 4,000 flight hours, of course, when they don't make the same amount of flight hours, they have a lower demand and that you can see on our sales. We take the next picture. Uh, our humidifier population very quickly, we have flight, the crew, rest and cabin. Uh, our population is very young. Uh, most of our humidifiers out there are, are less than five years. So there is no risk that our, uh, our humidifiers are taken out. And you can see on the upper corner the uh, contribution between commercial and private yet. So far, the commercial aviation is uh, leading and the aftermarket is most dependent on commercial. Take the next slide. Uh, as we said, the aftermarket is the key for a quick recovery. And we had the last three quarters of last year. You saw that we were selling less in the aftermarket than the underlying demand was. And therefore we had 
very tough quarters. What was interesting with the first quarter, 21, was that we did sell to the underlying demand. So the first step in our recovery we have taken. The second step we will take is uh, dependent on the flight hours. So on the, on the graph to the right side, you can see the flight hours on the 787 fleet. So for us to recover more in the aftermarket, the flight hour on specially 787 has to come back. So if we take the next slide, here you can see over a longer period, the total amount of flight hours per month on the 787. And you see before COVID-19, it steadily growed with the increased population. Then we got COVID-19 and we were down very much, but immediately it started to recover. And uh, the reason for that is that 787, even though the international traffic have been low, 787 have been used a lot domestically, and that international travel you, traffic you have is served to a great extent by 787 before, because it's an efficient airplane and it has uh, smaller capacity. We take the next picture. Uh, we have products that that is correct to the market. For the humidifier, we have the trends of in-flight air quality is discussed a lot. We have the wellness aspect. And on the dehumidifier side, we have the sustainability card and uh, that the government will put more pressure on the airlines to uh, save fuel. Take the next slide. If we look a little bit more in detail on the three segments that is important for CTT, the aftermarket is the first segment, of course, that is most important. We have discussed that the aftermarket comes back as soon as the aircraft starts to fly in the same amount as it did before COVID-19. And I think, as I said, the international traffic will come. On the, on the OEM side, it will take a longer time. We have the 787, uh, the production rate is now down to five aircraft per month compared to 13 aircraft a month uh, before the pandemic. I think we will have to wait until 23 before we have an increase in production rate from Boeing. But then it will go up because 787 is a very popular aircraft. We also work hard to try to get cabin humidification into that fleet. Uh, if we would manage with that, of course, we would sell more humidifiers to the 787. On the 350, it's about the same as by 787. Airbus is down to five aircraft a month. There we have a good content. We have possibilities to sell five humidifiers and two dryers. Here we have to work with the selection rate by the airlines. But A350 is growing for us. 787 have been the strong part, but A350 comes closer to 787. The next project, the 777X, is the new big uh, Boeing aircraft. Of course, we were very happy to get that uh, platform also. We could sell five humidifiers to that aircraft, but it is delayed due to the pandemic. I think it will be entering into service during 23. But when it starts, when passengers come back, when international tra tra traffic grows, this will be a very popular aircraft because the 747 and the A380 with four engines, they, they are out of the game now. So for the future, I think 777X will be very important. And then we have the MC21 from Russia, where we have a cockpit humidifier. They have started serial production and that will grow during the next couple of years. We take the next slide. If we look at retrofit business, of course, it's difficult when the airlines is in a bad financial shape, but we got an order now uh, for 10 more systems to an existing customer. Uh, I think this will be the, in the next future, we will sell the system to existing customers when they are increasing the fleet. But the drying system, of course, has uh, a future as a sustainability product. The airline has to save fuel in the future and uh, Suna drying can contribute. We also get have an interest in cabin humidification with the discussion of COVID-19 and the effect of drying out during long haul flight. 
I think uh, airlines will be more and more interested to increase, in, include cabin humidification in the comfort packet. It happens on new aircraft, but we also have a good chance to sell it to old aircraft. And the best fleet to sell it to is the 787 fleet. There is 1,000 aircraft out there which could relatively easily be uh, equipped with the humidifier so you get humidification in business class. So I retrofit is a little bit difficult, but I think here we have a good chance to grow for the future. We take the next slide and that we call private jet. As you know, we have been selling our humidification system with drying to big VIP aircraft. I we, I think we made the first business almost 20 years ago. Uh, it was at that time a few aircraft that took the system. Now, if you have a big VIP aircraft, almost all of them are equipped with uh, humidification. That is also recognized by Airbus. We have developed a system together with Airbus for the smallest VIP. They deliver the A320 family. There, Airbus includes it, will include it in the option list. So I think we will have a much higher penetration on those aircraft types. So Airbus has clearly taken the position, if you fly VIP, the cabin should be humidified. So there we have made a big step during the COVID-19 period. We have also been able to get to fit into the business yet market. Business yet is very interesting because there you have more volume. Um, Bombardier and Gulfstream, which are the big ones, they will build about 40 a year each of uh, a business jet type that can fly up to 15 hours. We have developed the system for this Bombardier aircraft. It is installed uh, and they will start flying now during the summer. So this is really a milestone for CTT. This is the first time that uh, we have developed a system for such an aircraft. And you can imagine such an aircraft, which is for private use, uh, cost about 75 million US dollar. So of course they can, uh, they, they can afford to buy a humidification system to those aircrafts. So there we have made a really uh, big step in our private jet segment. And the last picture is Airbus. A new aircraft, which they have taken over from Bombardier. They make a business jet version of it, and they call it the ACG 220. This cannot fly 15 hours, but it can fly more than 10 hours. So Airbus has said this aircraft should be humidified. So I think they go into a selection period to select supplier. Uh, with our cooperation with Airbus, I, I think we have really good chances. And again, it's so important that Airbus is standing behind humidification. This is totally different as it was for 10 years ago. Then they did not talk much about humidification. They said those aircraft, they are so comfortable. But now they say they are really comfortable when you add humidification. So during this COVID-19 period, we have made investments in the VIP or private jet segment. Uh, so that is the most positive things that has happened during the pandemic for CTT. I think this was the last slide. You can take the next slide, Carl. So we made it in 23 minutes. Was it okay, Carl? That was uh, perfectly okay, Torbjörn. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, the first question has to do with, uh, if we then think about uh, the delivery side or the OEM side of your business. What are your thoughts on the trends regarding increased selection rates for humidification within uh, business class towards the newer aircraft models such as the A350 and the 777X? Yeah, I, 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 of course we, we have two airlines, China Southern and uh, Aeroflot that has taken humidification for the business class uh, in the 350. Uh, they have both, China, uh, China Southern flies it and Aeroflot will start to fly it. That is good ambassadors for us. We, we can show with those airlines that it works and it has an effect 
So I think normally this will spread to more airlines. Uh, the question is how quick it will go now, because uh, it, it depends on the recovery. But with the discussion of air quality, I would be really surprised if we don't get more customers. And on the 777X, you know, we have Emirates, which is the most important customer. And we have ANA, the Japanese airlines, that is also important. So I think on that platform, which will be the king of the aircrafts in the next 20 years, I think we will sell a lot for cabin humidification. If you have such a nice aircraft you, and you have the possibility to, to make first and business comfortable, I think many airlines will select it. And the final quick question has to do with, uh, we, we've read a bit of news how Emirates, for example, has shifted some of its 777X orders into Dreamliners. Uh, and what are your thoughts about how this would uh, impact CTT, considering your high penetration on the 787 program? Yes, I think uh, this trend we will see, as I said, uh, 787 is a very popular long distance aircraft. It was it before the pandemic, but it's even more so because it can fly all the routes and it's not too big. And that's typical that Emirates then take some more 787 now before the market comes back. Uh, but generally for CTT, if we sell uh, two or three humidifiers on 787, or if we sell two or three humidifiers on the 777X, it doesn't matter very much. Uh, what our goal is really to get cabin humidification also into 787. Uh, then it wouldn't matter anything for us which type of aircraft the airlines select. If they select 787-350 or 777-X, we have the chance to sell humidification to all of them. So for us, it's really the marketing of humidification as an improvement of the cabin. Take some benefits of the COVID-19 and say it's not acceptable to fly so long in such a dry environment. So that will be our message now. And uh, for us, it really doesn't matter too much with type of aircraft the uh, airlines select. Uh, with that, thank you very much, Torbjörn, for, for joining us uh, during this uh, Investor Days. Thank you all of you who have been listening um, and take care. Thank you very much.